Today's video is part one of the three part series we're making for wise cams and getting the most out of those devices. Now today we're going to configure these cameras and get the most out of them through that basic configuration. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by helping you align your lifestyle with the Wise Cam. So we're going to start with the most basic of configurations, what most people do when they go out and they buy this $20 camera. Now, one thing I want to tell you about before I move on is that I did produce a walkthrough of the interface for the WISE cameras and really the WISE application in general. You can find that link down below. So if you're needing some of the walkthrough of how to get to the different things, grab that link. So you can just pause this video, grab that link and bring that up. You can kind of watch these two in conjunction with each other. We're going to start with the basic configuration and this is what most people go out and buy but as I go through each of these configurations you'll hear some of those drawbacks and then as we go through the video we'll mitigate things a little bit but what most people do when they buy this camera is they're looking to monitor a space and they want to measure or get recordings of the movement through the space and any sound in the space and they just want those recordings to happen now in order to do this this is kind of the way the camera comes set up the motion and sound event recordings are turned on and there's no schedule created for that. Then you also have the notifications turned on for both of those types of events and you've left the sensitivity relatively high at that midpoint. The other thing people often do is they leave their SD or HD uh, as the, the video quality on the camera and they also leave the night vision on auto to have it switch between its IR light, turn that on, turn that off, depending on how much light is in the room. Now with this basic configuration, there's a number of problems that you are going to feel right off the bat. Number one, you're probably going to be inundated with notifications and with uh, recordings. They're only 12 second recordings and they're going to the cloud only, so that's the only way to really access them is through the application. The other thing that occurs for a lot of people is they notice the cool down impact. And what I mean by that is when you send an event recording to Wise's cloud, you then have to wait five minutes for the next uh, recording to go to the cloud. So oftentimes there's a lot of frustrations with this setup, but one of the biggest ones is that people start to realize they're taking video of their family and that's going to the cloud and often a privacy focused individual wants to mitigate that first. If this then that becomes a really important tool in this case because we can use a number of services to actually trigger off of and I, I use Samsung smart things to trigger off of for my whole family having left the smart home and I do that in a, a roundabout way. You could use a location trigger, which would just attach to a singular smartphone. That would be a good trigger to use. Or I think the best one and the easiest one for families to use is Life360. And you can go and you can install this on multiple phones. You can go get that application. The free account allows the tracking that is required for this and you can actually just have a great trigger condition. There's a couple of great trigger conditions. So when the last person leaves the home, you can then turn on your wise cams with them being the action component of that if this then that applet. And when the first person arrives home, you can actually have the cameras turn off and this will instantly bring that privacy focused individual to a place where they are a lot happier with the wise cam. Now the problem with this is you're still left with those 12 second recordings and you also will still be relatively inundated with the notifications that you have. And one of the first things you should do with these cameras is take that sensitivity way down. Now you're seeing my settings for most of the cameras that I have set up and that is because you will still capture movement in almost every space with this low of a sensitivity setting and you will start to miss some of those lighting change adjustments and you also not be listening for any sort of 
click or bang throughout your home. I don't want to leave you high and dry with managing notifications. Now in the bottom right you can go to the account screen and then into the notifications tab. Every device that you have installed in the Wise app has a page here with the notifications and you can turn them off with those radio buttons. Now there's also the ability to manage through the rules section in a very smart way. So you can create a new rule and I can point you towards the schedule here where you can mute and unmute notifications. So when I choose to mute, I can choose a start time and the days I want to mute those notifications for and set an end time. Now, the device trigger way is another great way, especially if you have something like the wise lock. So you can go into that and if it unlocks, then what you can do is actually turn off your notifications because clearly someone is at home and when it locks you could turn them on that depends how you manage that wise lock obviously now the last way that you can manage this inside of the wise app is just the simple bell icon at the very top you can turn that on and off to mute the notifications. One other major way to mute the notifications is to actually schedule the event recording. So it's very easy to change your event settings in order to schedule them throughout the day. The last thing you can do with these settings is also maybe the most effective and that is to turn on person detection which is inside of the Y services section of the application and then once you've done that you can filter your your notifications as well by motion people or sound detections. Now the other thing this will do is just limit the event recordings for motion to ones that include people. Now the reason I mention this at the end of this section and don't just tell you right off the bat to do this is because it is not yet a extremely reliable person detection. So try it out. We still have one pretty big drawback in the system and that is those 12 second recordings and there's actually a number of options that WISE has now provided within this camera and within their services to extend how long you can get recordings for. Now, the first thing you have to decide on is whether or not you want recordings to be local or you want them to go to the cloud and or you want them in both situations or both places. So the first local recording option is actually to go get a micro SD card. You want 32 gigabytes or under, although the cameras can handle more and I have installed more in some cases in these cameras, but in general you want that and I would say you go buy the one from Wise because that helps with any sort of support you need from their team. Makes it pretty easy to say, hey, all these products are Wise help me out. Now, the thing you want to do with that, once you've installed that, you can actually choose between a couple of options, but just with the event recording option only. So what's happening here is you are still going to send those 12 second cloud recordings over to the Y servers and you will still have those remotely. But what this instantly does is it, it extends the period of time on those wise cams that you are recording. The amount of time that you're recording is actually up to a minute. So it will sit there and it will record a video file for a minute on your wise cam and locally onto that micro SD card. Now, what happens is if the event continues, they break the file at the one minute mark and they continue to record another one minute file. Now, all of this is going on. There's no cool down period. And so you can get continuous recordings for as long as you need of any event happening in that space. As the card fills up, it will just simply go all the way back to the first event you had and start overwriting those events. And it will just continuously do this over time. The other option with that micro SD card is to turn it into a continuous recorder. And that actually means it will just record regardless of whether someone's in the space, an event has been triggered, any of those sorts of things, the camera is just recording directly to that micro SD card. Now, this is clearly for people who uh, have a business or want to always have footage no matter what is happening in the space. They don't want to be reliant on any sort of motion triggers or any sort of smarts inside of that camera. They just want the footage to be there no matter what. Now just to clarify with continuous recording, your remote cloud, those 12 seconds recordings, 
those would still go to WISE servers, those would still be there. So basically, no matter what, as long as you have the events being detected, the motion and the sound events, as long as you have those going, you're at least sending 12 second videos to WISE servers for storage there for up to 14 days. Now, if you want to extend this and you want those remote recordings to be there, and let's say you're worried that maybe someone might enter your space and they might actually steal the camera and then you would lose the localized recordings here. If you're worried about that, then what you can do is you can actually purchase a service and this is $1.50 per camera US right now. And what you get is essentially as much recording to the cloud as you need. And it kind of extends it the same way that that micro SD card extended locally here on those events. So they'll create the one minute files, but if you continue to need it for that event, it will continue on. So you can actually use those all together again as a hybrid setup to have the most secure and the most recordings that you can have in any camera today really in that space. I think that gives you a number of good solid configurations to start out with but oftentimes we want to extend outside of this camera and one of the ways we can now extend outside of this camera is with these other WISE products that are on the table and the other products that they have put out re recently like the WISE Lock. Now up on screen are our two videos that are part of this series the other two videos and if the they're not on here you're going to want to hit that subscribe button so you can get those when they come out they'll be coming out right behind this one so otherwise guys you can go watch part two and part three and get even deeper and get even more out of your wise camps otherwise thanks for watching today and of course don't hate automate